Okay, well, everyone is here. And so I will welcome you to the April 26th Water Commissioners meeting. Um, please note that in accordance with the emergency orders announced by Governor Charlie Baker, this meeting will not be open to the public for physical attendance and the select board members um, slash water commissioner members are meeting via online Zoom web conference. This meeting is being recorded live stream and cable broadcast by the Eastern Community Access Television, which is Comcast 98 and Verizon 23, and on ECAT's website, www.eastoncat.org. This meeting is closed caption for the hearing impaired. If you're watching on your computer, you'll see a closed caption button on the toolbar at the bottom of your screen. Um, I, we have two new water commissioner members that I'll introduce um, more appropriately at the select board meeting, uh, which follows this, but uh, welcome to Jamie Stebbins and Jen Stacy um, as uh, new water commissioners. And I'll just ask everyone starting with Craig to um, say their name to ensure that we have a quorum. Craig Barger. Mark Lamb. Jamie Stebbins. Jennifer Stacy. And Dottie Fulginetti. So tonight we have um, Rich Tierney and David Field will be joining us um, to talk about water restrictions and give us an update on that. Welcome. Uh, sure, so Dottie, if I could just briefly introduce Dave and Rich uh, for the commission's benefit. Uh, in your water commission's pa uh, commissioner's packet, there is a memo from water operations manager, Richard Tierney, uh, laying out uh, a request uh, of the commission to uh, vote to declare phase three uh, water supply conservation effective May 1st through November 1st. Uh, this is uh, a request for a vote, but it is mandatory under the town's water permit from the Department of Environmental Protection. Um, so I'll, I'll turn it over uh, to Rich to kind of walk through that memo uh, for the board. Yes, good evening all. Um, Rich Tierney, operations manager. Um, I'd like to have you vote tonight on phase three uh, water uh, supply uh, conservation. Uh, this is based on our annual um, request of uh, water restrictions. Um, the twist on this one is based on our permit. Um, the residential per capita uh, we are held to a standard here in the state of Massachusetts of 65 gallons per day per person. Um, last year from our annual statistic report, uh, we went over that benchmark. We actually went to 72 gallons per day. And based on that, uh, that number, we're required to go to phase three, which uh, only limits us to uh, one day a week uh, of watering. So. Um, You'll see that from on the memo, uh, even numbers uh, will be allowed to water on Mondays from 5 a.m. to 8 p.m. And the odd numbers uh, will be restricted to uh, Tuesday mornings from that, those same hours, 5 a.m. to uh, 8 a.m. Okay. Rich, could you just clarify, is it... Uh five to eight a.m. three hours or is it five to eight? Okay. okay any um comments or questions from the board starting with just you, a, i'm sorry Daddy, you asked a question um rich I, I think i asked this last year too what's the process for for um notifying um users in the town that this restriction is now at, at level three which is which is much str more strict than it was last year Right. So, you know, we're going to have to do a, a public um, announcement and an awareness to uh, using probably some some electronic sign boards and using the social media networks of the town to try to get that out. All right. Thank you, Rich. So. Can I and I just to clarify last year we we started at phase two, we did go to phase three in, in August. Um, so we were at phase three from August till the end of the season. Um, so it would be no change to those, you know, to that. Is this effective immediately? It, it runs from May 1st annually till November 1st. It's okay. just the restrictions are much exceeded right. that standard. 
if I recall correctly, when it went, when it started May 1st, it was like for a couple of weeks or a few weeks, there was a bit of leniency. So people would become aware of this restriction. Um, and then it was, you know, middle of May, end of May, it was uh, a little more aggressive with um, enforcing it. Yeah. Um, it, we, it, you know, when you have the latitude like we did last year, Mark, um, we were allowed multiple days, two days a week of water. Yeah. Um, because we're down to one day, um, I think we need to try to get the message out early and try okay. to um, rain it in early because the longer we allow this, because we'll stay at the standard until we drop below 65 gallons per day per person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Jamie, Chris, do you do you want us to be helpful in this process in terms of if we see um, addresses that are watering at different times than, than are allowed that we should notify you, or how do you want to how do you want to proceed with that, Rich? Yes, sir. So in, in the past, we've, we've counted on our residents to uh, inform on each other. And usually we, we take it on, on ourselves to send mailings or we address the homeowner, um, you know, when we, when we catch the activity. But okay. normally we send letters to, to let them know that there has been a first violation because the second one is supposed to be a fining event. Okay, thank you. Jamie, any comments or questions? Richard, I was just going to ask, when we do drop below, like how often are we, you know, monitoring? Is it something that it's once a month we, we find out if we're down below that or, you know, what's that lag time? So um, the standard so that we, we are, are driven by uh, is comes from our annual statistic report. So it's based on our overall pumpage versus our residential use. So that residential use um, based on 365 days a year, that's what sets our bar for us for the next year. So 2020 was one of those years where we got ahead and used a lot more water than we should have. So a lot of this is driven by uh, outside uh, watering and that's what drives this whole piece. Can I explain what what you needed, or? I, well, it sounds like it's a rolling. You know, so it's going to be an annual, right? I, I understand we got to get below sixty five uh, gallons, but I was wondering when that's revisited, right? So if we drop, if we get below that in June, is 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 the phase three lifted or no? Not for no. It's so we annual. have to live with this through the the, the summer, through this all, all the way until November, and then hopefully in twenty twenty two, where we were below 65 and then we will get back to two days and yep. multiple hours on the day. Thank you. Yep. Jennifer. Um, are there any repercussions for the town of consistently violating that limit? Um, there are, and the, the state has performance type um, measures that they will, if they see that we're, we're struggling with getting below that 65, they will suggest that we come up with a written plan as to how, how we're going to uh, get the numbers down. And there's usually things like, you know, uh, incentives for residents to do various water conservation activities, um, you know, moisture son uh, sensors on the irrigation or rain sensors on the irrigation to try to uh, drop those numbers down. So Rich, um, thank you for bringing this forward. I have um, s some real concerns about our water usage, especially we're in a level two significant drought area right now. Uh -huh. And I think it's important for people to understand what some of the impacts of this are. Um, in, you know, this falls into climate change as well. One of the things that really concerns me is the amount of wind and strong um, storms that we've been having lately an impact of drought is that it hurts the roots of the trees and makes them less stable. And that means that when we get these really big wind storms, these trees are taking down power lines and it's really hurting um, the health of the trees is just one example of what drought does. Um, also, when we see our ponds and water sources going way down below, there's you know an environmental um, 
you know, the creatures that live there, there's a reason that they live there and, and what they have to do to keep the ecosystem going. And, and that's really uh, a concern as well. So I guess my question is, how will you know, like how often do you get an alert every day to say what the, what the gallons are or how, like, will you know in three weeks if we're doing well or if we're not doing well, how do you, how do you determine that? There, there are several different um, um, things that, that help keep us in line. One is um, we're, we're mandated to uh, trigger um, stream flow, which is part of the Taunton River. So um, last summer, and um, we monitored the USGS uh, website uh, to kind of capture those moments. And last year we were in very similar once we got to late July, early August um, for drought conditions. Um, but our state is already in, as you mentioned, uh, a heightened uh, significant drought awareness right now. So that and watching the Taunton River and then monitoring our overall pumpage every day. So that's what I really look at because right now we're pumping between 1.4 and 1.5 million gallons a day. But normally as we head close to Memorial Day, that number almost doubles and triples. So is there any room here? I, I, you know, part of me, when I'm looking at this chart, it says, you know, one of the things that residents and businesses can do is minimize water use, limit outdoor watering to handheld between five and nine and conserve water indoors, fix leaks um, and plant only native and drought resistance. Um, and um, establish water use reduction targets, implement drought and seasonal water rates. Um, you know, that could be an option to look at the water rates in the summer. I think we already have a leak detection program through the water department because I got notified a few years ago that they thought we had a leak because our water usage spiked. You take a look at things like that as well, right? Correct. And so when we, when we do those kind of various things, um, I know that there are going to be several impacts in the years ahead, especially with infrastructure needs on the system. This may drive some of this to a limited fashion because our water rates may escalate due to uh, certain infrastructure needs that will be brought forward to you folks here in the next couple of years as well. So if we look at this in a few weeks and we determine that we're not really making any progress, is there a way for us to further limit the water consumption by just changing it to hand watered and having no um, days for automatic watering, lawn watering? I, I really think the key part to this, Dottie, is, is getting the, the word out to, to all the residents in a timely manner because the more we do a public awareness, uh, and the people know the consequences I, and, and the seriousness of it. I think that's really what we need to do and, and uh, reverberate it across the town. Okay. All right, any, uh, any other questions from anyone on the board? Would somebody like to make a motion to declare a phase three um, water, uh, water state? and um, water conservation measures of May 1st to November 1st, 2021. I move to declare a phase three state of water supply conservation from May 1st, 2021 to November 1st, 2021. Second, Lamb. So that's Barger and Lamb, and then we'll do a roll call vote starting with Craig. Barger, yes. Lamb, yes. Bevins, yes. Stacy, yes. And Fulginetti, yes. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, we also have general minutes dated April 21st, 2020. So we vote to accept the minutes, not to approve the minutes. And that means that if you were not um, on, on the commission at the time, um, they can still vote to accept. Is that correct, Connor? Yes. Okay, great. So if somebody would like to make a motion to accept the minutes of April 21st. I move to accept the minutes of April 21st, 2020. Barger. Second, Lamb. And a roll call vote, Craig. Barger, yes. Lamb, yes. Bevins, yes. Stacy, yes. And Fulginetti, yes. 
So that's all we have on the water commissioners, unless there's any other uh, comments from Rich or David. No, nope. thank you all. Thank, thank you, Richard. Appreciate thanks, it. Rich. Thank you. Good night, guys. Yep. So we'll take a motion to adjourn this meeting and then we'll open the select board meeting. So can I get a motion to adjourn? So moved, Barger. Second, Lamb. And a roll call vote. Barger, yes. Lamb, yes. Stebbins, yes. Stacy, yes. And Fulginetti, yes. Terrific.